All right. Are you opening it or what? <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna do my weird uh, opening that I usually do. Um, do you? I'll be quiet until you introduce me. No. Thank you, mysterious voice, and welcome back to Around the Weird and also the Bits of Lit, um, the BookTube channel where we talk about books, but also we talk about the strange things and unusual things, because this is actually a two-channel endeavor now. Today, we don't want to talk about a specific book that, that we read, but rather, um, if you've seen our uh, monthly TBR, we are going to be talking about a movie. And that movie is all about uh, parental neglect and pianos. I am referring to Autumn Sonata, directed by Ingmar Bergman. And that was uh, published uh, sometime in 1978, I do believe. So for those who don't know, Ingmar Bergman is a Swedish director known for directing quite a few things in his time. Uh, he uh, was also known for The Seventh Seal, which I've also seen, uh, and a number of other movies which I might not have seen, but my co-host here might have seen. Uh, Lucas, what do you know about Ingmar Bergman? Well, I know he also made uh, some play stages of play what, 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 what i can't speak i also i know that he also made some plays uh that he has recorded too um but i've only ever seen seventh seal which i think i also recommended to you uh autumn sonata of course which we're talking about uh which i've now watched twice uh for this little endeavor and persona which is a really great like weird lesbian vampire type movie but it's not really about vampires and it's not exactly about lesbians. And so from here, we'll talk about the uh, summary of the movie, a little bit of the plot. Uh, yeah. It's kind of dense, so we'll go into um, uh, a little bit of, um, be, try to be brief there. Of course, you know my videos. Yeah. Brief. <laughs> I, and, do know, I do know one more thing about Ingmar Bergman related to this movie, actually, that I forgot to mention. Um, so I picked the movie to watch for myself um, a couple weeks ago. Because I saw um, on Criterion Channel, um, the director of Hereditary, uh, whose name I'm forgetting, and Midsommar, uh, and now Bo is Afraid. What is that called? What is his name? Ari Aster. Uh, he picked it as one of his favorite movies. Uh, and uh, what he said about it um, is that this is a movie near the end of his career. And I believe it's also the last movie Ingrid Bergman made because she died of cancer um, shortly after. Uh, but this is one of his much later works, and it's very reflective of his own life, which makes sense because he, too, is an artist uh, who made tons of movies or tons of plays that he filmed as well. Um, and it's sort of like him reflecting on the choices that he made Um with his own career and in his own life uh, and trying to, you know, navigate those emotions. And uh, yeah, so that says a lot about the man himself, I guess, <laughs> given what happens in this movie, but yeah. uh, that's, a, that's all I really know besides that. So, um, so without further ado, let's talk about the plot, the analysis, and then we will move on from there. So Autumn Sonata focuses uh, mostly on Ava and her mother, uh, Charlotte. Uh, at the beginning of the movie, we see that Ava uh, has not seen her mother in quite some time. She's talking to her husband, Victor, a lovely man. Um, uh, and she just she's just very excited that her mother is going to be coming, noting that there's been a bit of a, uh, of a time gap between her last visit uh, and we are given absolutely no clue about why there's been a time gap, uh, but we are about to find out. Um, uh, Charlotte arrives and things are initially good, but then Ava mentions her, her uh, sister with a chronic pain condition that's left her disabled. Uh, and Charlotte immediately wants out of the situation. Uh, but uh, Ava convinces her to go visit her. But it, again, it's clear that uh, as soon as Charlotte sees Helena, she is uncomfortable, even though she is this woman's mother, indicating um, a little bit of a troubled past there. Uh, Charlotte then goes to get dressed, and we see uh, some of the dissension, the rifts in the relationship uh, begin to form. Uh, Charlotte um, uh, is, is 
sort of on the phone talking about how uh, Ava kind of sprung this on her and sprung springing her daughter upon her. That's that's a kind of weird weird way of thinking. So we're already seeing that um, Charlotte is is a bit of a strange mom, and Ava is talking about how how Charlotte is going to play the victim in the situation, indicating that maybe she doesn't have the highest opinion of her mother. They have. Um, they have the dinner, which seems to go a little bit well, although we do see a, a few of the rifts in the relationship uh, uh, continue to form there. Uh, and then after uh, after dinner, um, uh, or maybe a short while later, uh, is when the real problems occur, as uh, both Charlotte and Ava are at the piano. And Ava plays for a little bit, and she plays very beautifully, but her mom, Charlotte, is very upset about it because... Uh, it, for some reason, it just um, like the music wasn't to her liking. And it should be noted that Charlotte was a pianist in her time. Uh, and uh, she begins to play in front of Ava. And from there, like we see on screen and I'll put the, the picture up here because it is quite an amazing uh, sort of uh, uh, sort of uh, like picture right there that um, Ava is just staring at her mother with pure hatred. Uh, we we know that she does not like her, and it's a realization um, that she, that begins to form on her face uh, that she doesn't quite speak about right away. Um, and also at, at that time, we see uh, Charlotte in bed, kind of uh, wriggling about, very uncomfortable, like uh, indicating the growing dissension in in the relationship, which is also very interesting there. But then a short while later, uh, Charlotte and Ava continue to have. Um, uh, a discussion. And that is where these anger and frustrations come out. Uh, Charlotte claims to be a great mother, but Ava notes that, um, uh, you know, she's starting to realize that she never liked her mother and that she didn't want to voice these opinions, but she has no choice but to get it off of her chest. Uh, and so um, Ava tells her mom that she's never there for her, that she was an absentee mother, that she forced, when she was there, she forced these standards that um, were impossible to live up to. She felt that she was too ugly. Um, she couldn't play the piano and she never got to see her, her mother. Uh, she began sobbing at this point, uh, really getting at the emotion of, of, of it all. Uh, and uh, Victor, like there's a break uh, periodically and Victor comes in and says that Ava, you know, after her three-year-old son died from drowning, like she's She's always been a, um, a sort of a ghost in, in the household. And Victor isn't even sure that Ava even loves him. It seems to be a relationship of convenience. Um, he's just there and, and whatnot. And um, uh, more importantly, they have a, a, a bit of an age gap in their relationship. Um, uh, so there's not really a whole lot connected to there. And then ultimately, the movie kind of uh, go, uh, builds to a point where uh, Ava confronts Charlotte asking her to be a better mom, but more, more so than that, highlighting that uh, uh, as Helena, um, uh, as Helena's disability kind of grew and grew, uh, there was a point where she was feeling a lot better when Charlotte was there. And there was also a, uh, uh, one of Charlotte's male companions was there who was very positive towards Helena. But after Charlotte left, uh, um, like Helena began to grow worse and worse. And it's implied by Ava or strictly said that the, that the disability is, it was brought about a, 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 by being neglected by her mother, which is a very heavy thing to say. And it, that kind of explodes the relationship. Um, from that point, um, Charlotte just decides to leave and, and Ava kind of regrets her actions um, in, in confronting her mother, wandering um, on the grounds of the house, uh, kind of feeling um, uh, ashamed. I should also note that in that in the, in the exploding of the relationship, uh, Helena comes out of her bedroom, crawling towards the stairs and says, mother, stay. But it's very clear that her mom did not stay. Um, we're not really seeing seeing what's happening there. Um, but uh, in in the ultimate scene, um, uh, Charlotte is on the train, clearly not recognizing the harm that she's done to her children, refusing to own up to any of it, and kind of blaming Ava for everything, um, being very delusional in the process. And in the final scene, Ava uh, writes a letter to her mother apologizing for yelling at her. 
um, and, and noting that she's um, not happy with, with how things went, uh, giving the letter to Victor. Whether or not he delivers, or delivers the letter to uh, Charlotte or whether or not she even reads it remains to be seen, uh, but that's where the movie ends there. Now, Lucas, did I miss anything? Did anything like happen that I did not cover here? Well, she says, Mama, come, not Mama, stay. Okay, yes. That's uh, that's very important. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah thank you for that um okay so in terms of analysis there is actually a fair bit to talk about uh with this but of course because this is a two-person video um we can't do this the normal way that um that uh that we that i talk about uh, analysis an an analyzing books analyzing books and whatnot so um let's just first talk about the theme the major theme that pops up in this uh in this movie and that is uh parental neglect so yeah, yeah brutal you, you understand that uh so uh, in this movie, um, the main com the main complaint, the main idea is that Charlotte has never been there for her daughters, for her daughters Ava or Helena. Uh, for Ava, it's 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 a feeling that um, she was uh, not abused physically, like her life was okay. She had piano lessons and whatnot, but it was that she was um, socially or like parentally neglected state. Her mom traveled about and also um, emotional kind of abuse there because her mother told her, you know, made her feel like she was fat. She was never there for her. Uh, like when she tried playing piano, her mother made her feel like she was inferior and not that great, even though her skills are serviceable. Like, uh, I don't know how to play piano. She does. That's, that's an amazing skill to have. And yet her mom made her feel that she just did not um, uh, stand up to the challenge. And for, um, for Helena, it's even worse because it's implied that this parental neglect led to her... Uh, to her like developing this this disability which is you know um in in many cases like it's physical but it could also be a psychological and that the feeling of hopelessness and the feeling of a kind of loneliness brought about um by the neglect of her mother might have contributed somewhat to allowing that disability to um gain more of a foothold um, that it, and it's not completely psychological, but this ability definitely exists um, in a physical state. But being, you know, having that troubled upbringing definitely did not help things. What did you notice with, with this, uh, Lucas? Well, yeah, I noticed everything you did. But I mean, kind of going off of the things you said for Eva, like the most heartbreaking part about this um, uh, neglectful parent of Charlotte to Eva and also to Helena, uh, but for Eva, because we get to hear exactly what her feelings were uh, when she was a child, uh, that she felt like her mom abandoned her. And then when she was there, she was, like you said, imposing some uh, strict ideas about how she should be, what she should wear, how her hair should look. Uh, that maybe, maybe also like makes her feel inferior about her piano playing because she just hasn't put as much time into it or whatever, or doesn't have the natural gift, but it's like the worst part of it is uh, that Eva learns to hate herself because of Charlotte. Right. Um, and <laughs> she says probably one of the most devastating things I've ever seen on film, like a child say to their parent uh, in English, I think she says something like, you are a menace. You should be locked away so you are rendered harmless. <laughs> that is just so brutal. Uh, but I think like this, this feeling of abandonment uh, and, and neglect, uh, you know, even when her mom is there, she does say that, like, you know, you gave me too much attention uh, and not the attention that I wanted or needed because um um charlotte was trying to make up for lost time even though she admits that she never loved her children in the first place which is its own problem but it's like the the hardest part of neglect is that she doesn't listen to her child's needs uh and clearly doesn't seem to care when you see her like playing piano in that room and the and uh Eva's little girl is just standing outside the door in her 
you know, cute little dress ready to give her mom something. And her mom immediately, like as soon as she comes in, she's nice and polite, but immediately just tells her, all right, go along, dear, go play outside. <laughs> I've seen you for too long, basically. Yeah, I, I think another kind of theme would just be like, yeah, choosing your own career and selfishness. I mean, we I told you a little bit about like how this is supposed to reflect um, Ingmar Bergman's own career, of course, uh, being a director, always being away, making who knows how many films he made. Uh, but I think, you know, I, I didn't grow up with a dad, I suppose, but he was just never there, but not for the same kind of issues. I never quite felt neglected, uh, but I think a lot of people can't, by my own mother, uh, she was always very doting and loving and supportive of me. So I think we had some different experiences maybe, but um <laughs> <laughs> that's for sure <laughs> but um in, in my mind cats in the cradle was playing in my head <laughs> yeah <laughs> the, the kind of um you know general uh vibe going on here um it, but it's it's a very realistic uh, portrayal of of abuse and and like a, a parental figure like going after their career at the expense of mm -hmm. Because it, it's like, it, it never really. Yeah, I mean, comes it, off it, cartoonish. yeah, it, it never really comes off ca cartoonish. Uh, like, uh, it's it's just like the mother just wasn't there. It could happen to anybody. And like the things that she might have said or yeah. done contributed to a poor mental health for, for Ava. And, and like, you don't, you didn't really see that happening in, or like notice it until it was too late. And by, by the time, um, by the time uh, Charlotte came to realize it during in this confrontation, you know, Charlotte's not going to want to own up to that. Like I, I, I screwed over two of my children. Like what kind of realization is that? No one wants to own up to that. So you're going to like leave and try to try to focus on other things and maybe delude yourself into believing yeah. that, uh, that nothing was wrong at all. Uh, another major yeah. theme is talking about resentment, um, mm. talking about, um, but also grief and remorse um, especially at the end, you were talking about that that feeling of like I came to you with demands. Um, I do think it is kind of like how the, how the abuser works and saying like, oh, you you confronted me about this. You make me feel bad. It's like, woman, you you abused these <laughs> children for years. Like you should feel bad. Yeah. Like, Ava should not feel bad at all for confronting someone about their their terrible behavior. Like, sure, time may have passed and everything, and you can't you can't really like fix that. But you should definitely acknowledge it and acknowledge how you still don't want to focus on your on your daughters and focus yeah. on your role in contributing to their their dysfunction. And I, yeah. I getting at that emotion is something I haven't really seen in many other movies. Like, yeah, it's really cutting. I mean, it gets right at you. I I haven't ha I don't have this kind of relationship with either of my parents. I mean, I don't even know my dad, so I have no feelings toward him even though he's not been there for me, like it's fine. Cause it's never, there was never like, you know, with Charlotte, she was there sometimes and then she wasn't and then she was there and then she wasn't. But for me, like I don't have any resentment toward him. I just feel nothing. And with my mom, I mean, we have fought, we have had some um, of the most legendary battles against each other, but there's no ill will uh, or resentment there. But um, certainly the, I mean, the pure, like this could only be written from experience, I think. I think Ingmar Bergman had some real serious talks with his daughters or children, at least. Uh, and I think there is, I do think that she has been abusive as a mother. I don't know. I, I mean, yeah, she is kind of maybe in a way kind of gaslighting about like, oh, I didn't hurt you. Didn't we have so much fun that year during that summer? But I don't think it, I think it's like, she is abusive and she's neglectful. Uh, but it's, I think Eva says that she's just so selfish and only cares about herself. I, I don't know, maybe, I, maybe I'm just too willing to forgive, but I do think it was never intentional to be that way. I mean, some abusers, like, it is very intentional, and they will put on this kind of act that Charlotte does. Uh, but I don't know. I don't know. That's just kind of how I feel. I think she was definitely abusive, but I don't think it was like, I mean, what did she get out of that? Like, an abuser gets control or 
some kind of power over the person they're harming, I guess. Uh, but Charlotte, I don't even know why she had children if she was focused on her career. So that's its own issue. But it might have been an accident for her or like she might have told herself, oh, yeah, I can have a child to carry on my legacy and whatnot. Yeah. Yeah. But maybe she wanted- yeah, maybe she wanted to have like a normal life, too, or some aspect of her life be normal. So she wanted to be a mother and then realized, no, I don't, <laughs> but couldn't take it back. <laughs> Uh, I feel like that's what happened, that she wanted to be a mother and then realized very quickly, this is much harder and more difficult and I value my career more. But she can't just give up the children. It does seem she did kind of try to be good to them. I mean, she put on an act, right? She didn't actually love them. Um, So that's brutal. But uh, I think oh, there's something that pops into my head. There's one thing that makes me think maybe you're, maybe you're right. She is an abuser. Cause she asks like, why couldn't she just die? Because she saw Helena again for the first time in year, seven years at, which is when they put her into the, like the nursing home or whatever. Why couldn't she just die? Am I, am I wrong for thinking that? Surely I'm not. I'm very warm and loving and, and heartfelt and people love my, my piano playing don't you agree <laughs> okay maybe in that case she's in- oh, sorry you say something um like the worst thing is that she's so self-interested like she's mm-hmm. not like an abuser who's trying to gain anything out of someone she's just so self-interested that it comes at the expense of everyone else in her life and yeah that's like one of the worst kind of people who's like not aware no self-awareness of, of other people in the situation uh she just <laughs> purely focused on herself. And that might be like a big admission on Ingmar Bergman's part where he's like, yep, I kind of screwed up. (laughs) Yeah, kind of. That's putting it lightly. (laughs) Oh, the next thing we're talking about is, um, is Eric. Uh, What does Eric represent in the movie? Uh, Cause he dies. Like we're we're told very little about him, but what we are told is very fascinating. Uh, Eric, um, what, brought great happiness and joy to Ava. Victor notes that. Like, Victor says, like, hey, our relationship kind of sucks, but those three years where Victor, where, where um, Eric was alive, best we've ever had. Um, and then how, uh, like, she refuses uh, to kind of move on from that uh, because if she does, like, she's going to be filled with with great despair. Mm. And what I think Eric represents in, in, this, in this story is an opportunity to fix what her mother broke. Like, she, she, she was going to totally... I agree. Be- Eric and resolve any of the conflicts that that like um, she had with her mother and say, see, this is what what you could have been. But she doesn't get that choice because he, he drowned. And so she's kind of in this void of, of nothingness where she doesn't want to die. She can't die. She's afraid to commit suicide. And uh, like she can't she can't be with Eric. So there's just nothing for her. Like there's maybe this confrontation with her mother. But even after that happens, there's just nothing left for her. So Eric was that opportunity for more, which I think is is a fascinating element of, of, of the story. I, did you catch that at all? Yeah, actually, I didn't think about um, Eric too much. But it, as soon as you said um, that it's sort of a, a way for her to make up for, you know, like the sins of the mother, so to speak, uh, that it, actually that immediately clicked for me uh, that, yeah, actually, that's probably what like Eric's role as a character or a, a plot point uh, is, is that, yeah, to make up for what her mother couldn't do. And then when he dies tragically before the movie even happens, when he's about to turn four the next day, because he drowns in the fjord or something. Um, I think like, well, you know, she like gives up her parish work, stops practicing as much on the piano. Right. Right. Uh, I mean, I think she does a little bit because she played organ. She played the organ at some community event like a week before the event of the movie. Um, but I think, again, that's also why she takes in uh, uh, Helena, not only like to uh, stop her own grief about losing her child, but probably to, if I can't make up for the sins of my mother through my own child and be a good mother to my own child i will make up for the sins of my mother to my sister who she's really neglected 
Uh, but then what, what about Victor, though? I don't know what to make of him. <laughs> Cause... Victor seems like a very nice guy, and he gets Ava. I think he genuinely loves her, but yeah. he recognizes that he's not probably I agree. what Ava needs. That he's just like, um, he's just kind of there for her. Um, and like maybe yeah. if Eric had survived, they'd have a better relationship, but it's never going to be anything more than what it is now. Yeah. I think kind of thing. he does seem like a really loving husband. I mean, he, he talks to the camera at the beginning and at the end, uh, sort of in like a soliloquy in a way, something like that, or not, not a soliloquy, a soliloquy, uh, like an aside directly to the audience just to talk about his love for his wife and the pain that she's going through. Doesn't really talk about his own, just talks about his wife and her accomplishments and that kind of stuff with her books uh, and her own playing and, and their relationship, I guess that's when he talks about uh, himself is through his, re through his relationship with her. But uh, my favorite scene of his is <laughs> when mother and daughter are having it out and it's just, a, a blood bath of words and he comes down because he hears the arguing and he like looks in and decides to walk away <laughs> i think he made the right choice there i think uh, i do want to talk about one scene uh, that you've talked about quite a bit but i haven't said anything the piano scene um uh that music that prelude or not was it a prelude I forgot. Yeah, it was a prelude, I think. Uh, um, Chopin's sixth prelude or something like that. Um, with the, you know, the heavy notes, boom, 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 whatever. Dun, dun, dun. All that sound, all that music. Uh, I'd never heard that music before. I haven't listened to a lot of Chopin, but what I noticed the second time watching it, uh, yes, the, the facial expressions like you talked well, one, we didn't talk about Charlotte's facial expression when her daughter is playing, which seemed like, to me, not contempt necessarily, but just kind of like, this is it. <laughs> um, but also a kind of like, I do feel like there was some kind of regret there, uh, which I'll get into. The, I think she has some regret a little bit later that actually does show through. Other than like, you don't love me, even though I've made mistakes please forgive me. But like, she criticizes, um, uh, Charlotte criticizes Eva's playing of this prelude, uh, because she doesn't know the fingerings and uh, hasn't practiced it a lot and whatever else. Um, but when she plays it, you know, she talks about how um, Chopin was not sentimental. He was very emotional, but not sentimental. But the way that Charlotte plays it, I guess it, I guess it is emotional, but it's like, it's almost too clean. I mean, she is a professional pianist. There is a slight difference in the way they play. I almost felt more of the sorrow and, and kind of passion and emotion from when Eva plays it. I don't know if you noticed it when you watched it, but it almost felt like because she's playing it so clean, that's kind of like, you know, showing uh, Charlotte's, she's not sentimental in a way, you know, so she's not uh, caring for her kids. That was kind of a first sign to me the second time watching it. I don't know if you caught that or if I'm just making things up, but the way they play it, I think, showed, uh, you know, Eva's more emotional. She does have a lot of things on her mind. Maybe she's making mistakes or whatever. But I think she makes one mistake. <laughs> um, because Charlotte doesn't play a note that Eva plays, which I noticed on the second time. But Eva plays a very clean. And I was thinking, like, you would, because you have no feeling for this poor girl who is looking at you with total contempt right now. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I agree. Like, um, like Ava's... Um playing of it is very um like from somebody who you know not really like has been trained but not let like not to a great extent and like yeah. who like has gone through the feeling that chopin is describing in in this music whereas charlotte mm -hmm. is is somebody who's well trained so she's going to play it exactly as it was written um but so for someone who hasn't done a lot of introspection 
and hasn't really thought of the emotion that they're wreaking or wrecking. Yeah, she knows the emotions, but she hasn't thought it or felt it herself. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, go on. That's exactly it. Yeah, like she, for someone who hasn't done a lot of introspection, she's, um, she's, like, it, 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 so it doesn't come off the way maybe Chopin intended for it, for it to come out. So for her to lecture Ava, like who's probably playing it the right way, like it's um not the right way, of course. Like, yeah. um, like that it, it comes off a little arrogant and um, <laughs> yes. Um to the um, to the overall like like problems that, that Ava mm. has been describing this entire time. Yeah. Uh I I do wanna maybe give a little defense to Charlotte though, for what may seemingly one good thing that she has done in Eva's life, uh, when they were yelling at each other, um, uh, Eva mentioned that she was going to have another child with some other man, right? Uh, but she was still a teenager, I think, uh, maybe like 18 years old or something. And Charlotte didn't allow it and like had her, had her get an abortion. Uh, through that conversation, it seemed like Charlotte forced Eva to get an abortion uh, for her first child when she had a much older man. Uh, I don't think it was the same. I don't think it was Victor, right? I, I'm now forgetting. I've seen this movie twice, but I think it was some other man. Uh, and Eva says, you know, I, I was young. I was in love or he could have helped or we could have done thing, something together or figured it out or something like that. Um, but she was, I think, 17 or 18 i can't remember how old she said she was but she was extremely young and i'm just saying i'm just kind of thinking like victor is much older than eva yes by probably 15 years or so i think looks like roughly Mm -hmm. um i guess we don't know how old the other man was but i don't know i feel like maybe maybe i wanted to know more about that situation maybe charlotte did try to help actually do something good at that time or maybe she was just being overbearing and harsh and cruel <laughs> i don't know the charlotte defender has logged online <laughs> yeah <laughs> I, I think the thing there is that uh you see the uh, her like sobbing at that point talking yeah and it's like the like Ava was ready to make that decision on her own and charlotte took it from her oh yeah that's right yeah that's, yeah you're probably right there. That's, that's the case. But in Ava's mind, she feels that that was like one of the biggest grievances and and like in kind of not having that uh, control anymore. So I think it's it's very fascinating in, in that moment. Yeah. Well. Um, the, the emotion on display there and the 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 the, the resentment that she's that she's feeling. Pretty yeah, happy. I mean, yeah, I mean, even before that, like before she really starts yelling, the, the like one of the last things she says before it gets to that point is that um like you made me realize that there's not a shred of me that's worth loving or something like that because you made me hate myself and you made me realize there's not a shred of me worth loving because you're always trying to change me you wanted me to cut my hair you wanted me to not wear uh dresses anymore you made me wear pants you uh thought i was too fat or whatever um and it's yeah just like Mm, uh, Charlotte, why you had one that you didn't want? Why did you have another? <laughs> the last thing I just wanted to talk about was um, the uh, sort of like there's a lot of t- to talk about with the script and the directing, and it's all mm. really great. But the thing that stands out to me most is the is the cinematography, in particular how the, this movie is is framed um, because it's actually really simple. Like I was, I was blown yeah. away by like how simple the entire movie is. It's just framing people and usually these one, one camera systems where you frame like a hallway or a specific room. The camera doesn't move out, move around, but when it does, it, it, it's very interesting. Yeah. Like it doesn't how move it does. too. Yeah. It doesn't move too often. And everybody's like this close to the camera. <laughs> mm-hmm. Really close. Really good- yeah. You really get the personal kind of emotional emotionality of it all with yeah. with how that camera is is really working. Uh, it's uh, like the the biggest. The, I think the biggest like 
change outside of the household is you you you're, you see the train, which is again filmed kind of like a stage setup, and then yeah. also the outside where Ava is is walking around, kind of, but it still feels like she's locked in a in a prison. Even outside, she's yeah. surrounded by by trees and this fjord where presumably where her son died. Well, there's a gate around her too, and then the, uh, and then there's uh, and yeah, she's um, in the graveyard. So there's all these uh, grim symbols around her as well. So she does. She definitely feels like a woman who's trapped by her own uh, grief and by her own resentment. And you see that because her face is this close, and Liv Ullman. Uh, is just an amazing actress. And like you feel everything that she's feeling, even if like me, you haven't had these kinds of feelings um, towards your own mother or a father either. Uh, It's just like, I know you feel like you know exactly how she feels or I did. Maybe you you have a different experience than me, but um, yeah. I mean, whether it's the early conversations where everything seems light, fine and dandy like, oh, and then suddenly things change dramatically when she says, Helene is here, really up close. And you see very clearly, you know, uh, Ingrid Bergman, also a fantastic actress. Uh, she makes so many facial expressions to really show, like, disdain or resent or shock or confusion or whatever, depending on, you know, what's just happened. Or when she's listening to, uh, you know, Eva's got some buried away grief that she hasn't worked out yet and she goes to eric's old room um well that is an amazing scene too uh because eva's just talking about like how she goes up there to um pass the time basically and just try to be in that room for this wonderful boy that she no longer has and the whole time she's talking about it kind of in a romantic way um you know romanticizing what could have been and all that stuff um the <laughs> the expression on charlotte's face is just like disgust <laughs> about this sorrow that her daughter is feeling uh and she's not even looking at eva either she's looking away not quite at the camera but she's just like not not like Eva is behind her kind of and to the right and she's looking somewhere over here and it's just, and then the next scene is her talking to Victor. Like, I think she's neurotic. There's something wrong with her. (laughs) Charlotte's so terrible. The other day I told you, (laughs) I relate to Charlotte the most (laughs) because I know that I can be quite selfish. I don't think I'm as bad as her, but I definitely have a self-centered side. Uh, that causes me some problems. Uh, this movie is a litmus test, Lucas. If you identify <laughs> with Charlotte, we're coming. The euthanasia <laughs> agents are coming right away. <laughs> yeah, this is why I keep defending her. I can't be that bad, surely. <laughs> but well, my like, question, yeah, what are you going to say? No, I I get that. Like it's 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 like I feel like there's a drive for people to identify with Charlotte, but that's the trap. If you see Charlotte's yeah. perspective, you can get away with so much heinous shit. Like it's, it's, it's unbelievable yeah. what she's doing and <laughs> it doesn't stop there. Like there's so much the surface that we don't see there. And mm-hmm. like, like I, Ingmar Bergman is definitely making a statement that like, Charlotte's life is not one you want to live. Ava's mm-hmm. life is not one you want to live, but that's by accident. That's by, by, you know, consequence of being so close to yeah. charlotte and so a monster <laughs> those are our thoughts on uh autumn sonata uh directed by uh, ingmar bergman uh so next we you know let's let's talk about um you know our overall opinion uh and uh whether or not we we uh would argue that this is worth seeing usually you know we you, people like rate movies at this point i'm i'm personally i, I keep all my ratings personal um because um I, I just want you to know if I recommend this and um, how high, high quality I think it is. And for me, I, I think it's uh, uh, enormously good. Uh, one of the better movies I've, I've seen, um, especially in, in 2023. Um, uh, it feels like there's been kind of a, a weird lack of, of, of movies like this as of late. Um, although uh, I, I personally enjoyed everything everywhere all at once. 
uh, kind of like um, no, getting that, <laughs> not me. <laughs> getting that uh, sort of apology and 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 a happier ending there. But yeah, I, I do recommend this uh, to everyone out there uh, if you're looking for something intensely personal um, uh, from a classic Swedish uh, director. This might be the thing for you, Lucas. What do you think? Yeah, even though I, I well, I relate it. I relate to it on the monster side rather than the like victim side. Uh, <laughs> but even though I, I relate to Charlotte more than, uh, than Eva or any of the other characters, certainly I did feel so much for, for, um, for Eva and the problems she was facing um, because what Charlotte does to her and, and to Helena as well is just monstrous. Uh, and although that's not been my experience, so I can't relate as well, I felt so moved by Liv Ullman's performance, and I felt like I knew everything that she had gone through, and with the direction, the way the way the camera uh, is put in place or moved, when it's moved, everything about it is just really well done, uh, and I think, you know, like I said before, uh, it was definitely a movie made with prior knowledge and experience of this exact situation, which again, like I said, Ingmar Bergman went through this and reflecting on his own career. So of course he would have that. Uh, but I think it's just so personal and really well done and so moving that it's one of my favorite movies. Um, and so I highly recommend it too, especially if you've got mother issues. <laughs> It might help resolve some of those, make you feel like, yes, someone else has felt that exact kind of uh, feeling. Maybe there can be some catharsis there. Mm -hmm. Very well said. Uh, so, yeah, uh, if you have any thoughts about uh, Autumn Sonata, put them in the comments below. Uh, let us know what you think so we can have a discussion uh, about that. Otherwise, don't forget to like, share and subscribe so that more people can you know, find out about Autumn Sonata uh, or join the Discord if you haven't done so already. So we can just talk about books and movies as well. Um, or you can find uh, Lucas over on the Bits of Lit. Uh, he'll have his own video up of what of what he thought uh, was was important in in this video. <laughs> so you'll get you'll get a tale of of, of two videos there. Uh, but until then, we wish you the best of luck in your uh, weird and parental neglect travels. Farewell. One little thing uh, you can like cut it and put it in. Uh, you have to. Oh, I, I want to say it's your time to choose next month's movie because mm -hmm. that shows this one so uh, I, I guess i'll just ask you what is next month's movie well for those curious at home next month's movie is going to be rrr um rise revolt revolution um that um uh uh tengalu movie uh from india that was uh released uh in 20 22. Um, I've seen it already, but I definitely want to discuss it here. I don't think Luke has uh, seen it yet. I have not seen it, but I've heard great things. I'm looking forward to it. 